Hello, this is Win Holes Apple. Today I am doing a tutorial on how to composite an intro using Wax 2.0. Wax 2.0 is a freeware compositor that's been around since 1999 and it hasn't had any updates since then. So it's quite surprising that it's generated a bit of a cult following in the editing world because of its simple 3D functionality and its ability to still work on newer versions of Windows. Anyway, what we're going to be creating today is what I'm about to show you. Alright, so let's get started. Anyway, so first you want to change your project settings to be in 720p. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go to the project settings panel. I'm going to change the width to be 1 to 80 by 720, which is 720p. And I'm going to set the frame rate to be POW, which is 25 frames a second, of course. I'm going to change my codec to be the XFID MP4 codec. If you are exporting to a video editor, I'd recommend using either uncompressed RGB or another codec which does not lose any detail. Um, at the moment, I haven't got any lossless video codecs installed except for the MSU codec, which is a fantastic codec if you want to use that. AVI is quite limited in this regard. It'd be easier if we had some Mac formats, but due to the nature of WAX being programmed, it doesn't include this. So I'm going to use XFID. I'm going to change it to be the 720p preset, and I'm going to leave all the other settings pretty much as they are. So. The first step is I'm going to resize my work step base to get a better idea of what I'm going to do. Um, now, to begin our project, we don't actually need any media files whatsoever. First thing we're going to do is we're going to add a text 3D plugin. This will allow us to have 3D text in our scene. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write our text. Now, a good font that I like to use for titles is called Big Noodle Titling. You can get this at fonts.net or another font site, and I'll put it at a size of 8. Now, the text I'm going to write is Affinity, because that is going to be the title of my hypothetical series. Okay, so now we have our text on the screen. As you can see, it's a little bit ugly at the moment, so we're going to change that quickly. I'm going to go ahead, go down to extrude length, I'm going to hit that to zero just by dragging it. Then we're going to go down to front material, and we're going to set that to white for now, and later we're going to change that. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to animate our title so that it moves forward. Now the easiest way to do that in wax isn't using the camera. You could use the camera, but it would mean it would generally doesn't look as good. The camera affects all items in the world, whereas we only want the title to move. The easiest way to do that would be to use a Transform 3D plugin. But, fortunately for us, we don't need to, because Text3D has the extrude parameter. But the extrude parameter would we'd see the side walls of the text. So, so we don't see the side walls of the text, we're going to change the side material to black. Once we've done that, we can animate the extrude length to our liking. So I'm going to go up to the extrude length and I'm going to hit the timer to three seconds. Three seconds. You can use the arrows to go back and forward one frame. And then I'm going to slap on the keyframe and I'm going to use smooth interpolation for our keyframing. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drag that first keyframe all the way up there. Then I'm going to go to 12 seconds. And I'm going to go just to that frame before the end because Wax doesn't allow you to place frames at the very end of a sequence. And I'm going to up the extrude level. And as you can see, out comes the title. And I'm going to stop it right there. So now, if we scroll back through what we've done, our title comes forward. Now, it's a very simple effect to do. Um, another thing I like to do to add a little bit more give to a title is I'll change the color as the title moves. So, instead of what we have at the moment, I'm going to go back to that frame at the very start just by moving this little timepiece indicator here, and I'm going to set the ambient color. That is the color when the text doesn't have any light on it. In this tutorial, we're not going to touch lighting in wax. Lighting in wax is a whole nother issue, and we're going to set that to black. So you, now you can't see the text. Now, I want this to be a very dark intro, so we're going to go from black all the way at the end, and we're going to set a keyframe. Now make sure that black is 
whoops, I needed to, I needed to put that that black at the same spot as the ease in begins. All right. Now at the very end, at that last keyframe, we're going to set the ambient to be a dark red. Anyway, okay, so the title comes out. Now, the next part of making a convincing title in Wax is to create a foreground element. In our case, we're going to use particles to create the foreground element. So drag that text 3D down, and then in the Video Plugins tab, we're going to select the Particles preset. Now that's not exactly what we want, that looks like a fire. What we're going to do is we're going to have the particles stream in from the side. So if we expand that particle tab, we're going to go down to creation. Now we're going to leave these pretty much as they are, maybe put that down, max particles, bring that down, why can't I add that? Anyway. Okay, cool. Double click it and you can change the number. I'm going to set that to about, uh, I'll set it to 1500 for now. And I'll set the particles a second to be, come on, come on. Okay. Set the particles a second to be, uh, I'll go 150. So that means 10 seconds of particles. So as you can see, there's a lot less particles. I mean, that could could maybe be a good effect to have a little burning logo there. God, I guess there's a potential for something going on there, but in our case, it's not what we want. Now, we put these particles in front of the text for a reason, because the particles are going to interact with the text, or at least go in front of the text. Um, if we turn the blur and this blend off, you can see that that added additive effect of the particles creates sort of this fiery glow from the middle of them. Now, our particles default color is a reddish tinge. We're going to leave that exactly how it is. And we're going to expand the emitter tab. Now, we don't want our particles to be going up. Well, we do want them going up, but only a little bit. So the first thing we're going to do is change the radius X up so the particles have a big berth to play with. That's actually pretty cool. Then we're going to move the particles down. So position Y, then put that minus... So there's, I don't know, a burning logo, but that's not what I want. I'm going to move the emitter to be to the left. I'm going to move it up a little bit, and I'm going to change the direction X, Y, and Z values. Now, direction Y, I don't want to be quite that high. I'm going to set it to 0.4. Direction X, however, I'm going to set to 0 0.5. So now the particles will hopefully stream in from the side when I get this right, 0 0.1. Maybe even higher on the X. Make that, make that something like that, all right? So the, the flames or what, whatever are licking at the bottom. Now we don't want to see them sporting in, so I'm going to just position it so that the particles are just teasing the logo. Good. Now, I want them to go up a little bit higher, so I'm going to up the direction Y, I'm going to up the radius Y, so that they spawn a little bit higher. And that's starting to look a bit neater. Now, so we've got ourselves a bit of a We'll just play that through. Sick. All right. Now, now that our emitter is sorted out, we're going to make it a little bit interesting. Now, when flames are burning, they generally don't spit out circles. Now, circles are cool if you want to do a really close foreground blurring effect, but personally, I like the look of adding a texture to it. So I'm just going to go over, open my folder where I've got the assets which will be provided in the description and I'm going to open leaf alpha 2. Now leaf alpha 2 is just a file that um, designates the leaf alpha. So these are going to look like kind of like rising leaves rather than falling leaves because actually that looks a little bit cooler. So I'm going to lower this text 3D, lower this particles and I'm going to chuck in leaf alpha on top. Then I'm going to put the particles inside leaf alpha. 
can drag leaf alpha to take up the entire sequence. Now, nothing's changed. First, we have to change the particles so they use the texture from leaf alpha. So I'm going to go drop down particles, drop down leaf alpha, and then tick use media. Now the particles are leaves, but we don't want them to all be the same direction, so we're going to add random low rotation. So expand the creation tab, and I am going to change the variance so that they spawn a little bit little bit more randomly and then I'm going to go to the emitter and I'm going to change max rotate oh yeah oh yeah beautiful good 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 let's have a look Cool. All right. Now, now that we've done that, we're almost ready to kick the bucket, as in finish the project. Um, you can fill around a little bit more with these particle settings. There's some pretty fun stuff in here, actually. Or you can you can even lower that min rotate a little bit, just so that they're all sort of pointing in a, sort of a nearly upwards direction. Um, you can lower the direction Y, you can change the radius, you can up the radius Y if you want. Make it a little bit a little bit higher. You can make them bigger, you can make them smaller just by changing the creation settings. We can make the max size, min size higher. Or we can even better, we can go to the death or destroy settings. And then go min max size and up that to about 8.3 come on oh, we'll just use the dragger okay 0.5 that'll do so they're a little bit little bit bigger so that's a yeah so there's there's that All right so I'm happy with that now if you like how the sequence ends, sequence ends, sorry, you can just go ahead and just have what I've done, which is the title just fades in, fades in, fades in, gets closer and closer to the camera, and then when it's really close, disappears. I like that personally. Or you can drag this keyframe back a little bit and then have the title stop and then disappear. Or if you really like it, what you can do is you can change the leaves so that they don't quite last as long. So we'll go max particles we'll down that to maybe, what do we have it on? 1500, 1000, or maybe even 800. That way there's a bit less particles to play around with. Cool. Okay. I'm happy with that. If you want to fade the um, title out, you can do that. It's a free world. You can go ahead and just set a keyframe there and um, set the text color to fade from the here to black, for example. You could... Um, you could set, you could keep that keyframe there, then go down to front material, and then go here and set that to black. And then there goes the there goes the title, and then of course you'd have to go to the particles and then fade them their color to black as well to make them disappear. But I'm not going to do that. Um, so time's come to render it so first I'm going to open up the project properties all these settings I changed at the start of the project if you recall so I'm going to leave them exactly how they are now for the file name I'm going to choose a location to save it I'm going to call this title attempt dot avi it's important you put the dot avi at the end because wax does not add that itself it's one of the perks of never being bug tested probably hit enter 
and then I'm going to change the codec. Um, generally, I do this now. This time I did it at the beginning of the tutorial, so I'm going to hit OK. Then I'm going to hit OK again, and then I'm going to press the green button and render my project. As you can see, it doesn't take very long. And when that's done, you can go ahead and open your file and you have a intro and you can drop that straight into your favorite video editor. This has been a tutorial by FreeVFX. If you liked it, please comment, subscribe, tell me what I did wrong and thanks for watching.